Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in this video we're going to go over the solutions to the work, energy, and power in CrossFit problem set and video problems. So let's dive right in. First off, if you haven't yet, make sure that you've taken the time to download, print out, and work through the associated problem set, which you can find at aplusphysics.com slash l slash CrossFit. First, we'll take a look at Tom. Tom performs 10 thrusters using a barbell of mass 45 kilograms in a time of 20 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the problems then. Draw a free body diagram for the barbell. Well, we'll start, start with the dot. We have the applied force that Tom applies to the barbell, F app up, and the weight of the barbell down. So how much force is applied to the barbell to raise it? Well, the applied force must match mg and slightly exceed it in order for it to move upwards. So the applied force is at least equal to mg which is going to be 45 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of earth 9.8 meters per second squared or 441 newtons and the bar is lifted from 0.7 meters above the ground to 2.2 meters above the ground in two seconds how much work is done well, work is force times displacement, so that's going to be force times displacement. We know our force is 441 newtons, and our displacement is the difference between 0.7 meters and 2.2 meters, or 1.5 meters, for a total of 662 joules of work. All right, moving on. What power is developed in lifting the bar? Well, power is the rate at which work is done. So power is just going to be work divided by time, which was 661 joules. And he did all of that in 20 or two seconds for each one. So the power each time he lifted the bar was 331 watts. Finally, what is the net work performed on the bar by all forces during the entire 20 seconds? The key here is remembering that the bar ends up where it start, started. So the total displacement is zero, therefore the net work must also be zero. All right, let's move on and take a look at Chris doing toes to bar. Chris performs 20 toes to bar exercises in 28 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the problems. What is the period of each toes to bar exercise? Well, the period is the time it takes to do one. So that would be 28 seconds. It took him to do 20 repetitions or 1.4 seconds for each repetition. If we wanted to know the frequency then, well, that's the inverse of the period, one over the period, the number of repetitions he can do in one second, which will be one over 1.4 seconds, or 0 0.71, one over seconds, which we also know as a hertz. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a look at Heidi in the rope climb. Heidi climbs five meters up a rope three times in 40 seconds. She has a mass of 50 kilograms. And the problems. What minimum force must Heidi apply to the rope in order to move upward? 
Well, once again, in order to move upward, she must apply a force that's at least equal to her weight. So that's going to be equal to mg. So the applied force that she has to apply is equal to her weight, which is 50 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity here on the surface of Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared, or right around 490 newtons. What minimum amount of work then must she do in order to climb the rope? Well, work is force times displacement. She did 490 newtons as the force, and the displacement is five meters. So that's 2,450 joules of work. And what minimum amount of energy must she expend in order to climb the rope? Well, if she did 2,450 joules of work, she must expend at least 2,450 joules of energy. So that's going to be the same thing, 2,450 joules. What is Heidi's gravitational potential energy with respect to the ground when she is at the top of the rope? Well, if she did 2,450 joules of work to get to the top of the rope, then that must be your gravitational potential energy, which we can prove by calculating it. Potential energy due to gravity at the top of the rope is going to be mgh, where again her mass is 50 kilograms. Her acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height, 5 meters, gives you 2,450 joules just as we predicted. Now though, if Heidi were to release the rope while at her highest point, with what velocity would she strike the ground? <coughs> Excuse me, neglecting air resistance. Probably not a good idea, but if she did it, what would happen? Well, that potential energy she had at the top of the rope must be transformed into kinetic energy right before she strikes the ground. So we could say the potential energy due to gravity at the top must be equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom or mgh equals one half mv squared, where v is at the bottom. And you'll note here that we can make a ratio of one with our masses and then solve for the velocity to find that velocity is going to be the square root of two gh, which in this case will be the square root of two times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, five meters, which is going to be right around 9.9 .9 meters per second. No dependence on mass. All right, and finally, calculate Heidi's minimum maximum kinetic energy if she were to release the rope while at the highest point. Well, if she had 2,450 joules of gravitational potential energy at the top, she must have that amount of kinetic energy right before she strikes the ground. So that would be 2,400 and 50 joules again. All right, let's move on and take a look at James doing pull-ups. James performs 21 butterfly chest-to-bar pull-ups in 24 seconds. With what frequency does James execute his pull-ups? Well, frequency is the number he can do in one second. He did 21 repetitions in 24 seconds, so 21 over 24 seconds is going to be 0 0.875 1 over seconds, or hertz. In the period, how long it takes to do each pull-up is going to be 1 over the frequency, or 1 over 0 0.875 hertz, which is 1.14 seconds for each pull-up. All right, and finally, let's take a look at Aaron on the box jumps. Aaron, weighing 500 newtons, jumps from the ground onto a 0 0.6 meter, bo meter box 20 times in 52 seconds.
How much work does Erin do in jumping from the ground onto the box? Well, the work she does must be equal to the force she applies times the displacement. So work is force times displacement. The force is her weight, which is given to us, 500 newtons. Note that this time they're not giving us mass, they're giving us mg right there. It's already calculated for you. In the displacement, 0 0.6 meters is going to be about 300 joules. What minimum amount of energy must she expend in order to jump to the top of the box? Well, that's got to be the same thing, of course. 300 joules. And what minimum velocity must Aaron leave the ground with in order to reach the top of the box? And we're going to neglect the bending of legs? Well, here we can look at kinetic energy, potential energy again. The kinetic energy of Aaron before she jumps, right as she leaves the ground, must be equal to the gravitational potential energy when she's on top of the box. So we could write 1 half mv squared, the kinetic energy, is equal to mgh at the top. Again, our masses are going to make a ratio of 1, and if we solve this for velocity, we find that velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh again, which is the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, 0 0.6 meters, or a velocity of right around 3.43 meters per second. All right, we're almost done. What is the minimum amount of energy Aaron must expend to complete her 20 jumps? Well, if one jump was 300 joules, then the total energy must be 20 times 300 joules for 20 jumps, or 6,000 joules. And what average power does Aaron expend during her 20 jumps? Well, power is the rate at which work is done. So that's the total work divided by the time, which was 6,000 joules that she must expend. And she did that in 52 seconds. So the rate at which she is expending energy is 115 joules per second, or 115 watts. And finally, what is the net work done on Aaron at the end of the exercise by all forces? She ends up where she starts, another trick question. So the total net displacement is zero, therefore the net work done must also be zero. All right, hopefully you feel a lot stronger about work energy and power problems. I'd like to take a moment to thank all the folks at CrossFit Recourse, the athletes and the owner, Chris O'Donnell. We really appreciate your help. Thanks everyone, make it a great day.